Hello and welcome to SABCS 23 Snippets, where we present a little introduction and results from the key studies at San Antonio. I'm Hope Brugo at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm joined by Terry Mamanis. Terry? Thank you, Hope. So Terry is at uh, Orlando Health and is a breast cancer surgeon and has uh, led the breast cancer trials in for NRG. And at this meeting presented very interesting and practice changing data from NRG B51 or NSABP B51. So we're here to talk to Terry a little bit about this data. Terry, tell us about the study design and what did you learn? Yeah, so the uh, NSABP B51 B51 or RTOG1304 was a collaborative study between NSABP and RTOG. Eventually, we all merged to NRG, um, which actually targeted uh, patients that present with involved axillary nodes, biopsy proven by either core biopsy or fine needle aspiration. Then they undergo neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and then at the time of surgery after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, are found to have negative nodes in the axilla, so they're not sterilized from positive to negative. So the question is. Are these patients, do these patients need and or benefit from local regional radiotherapy? Now, historically, we know that if you are a not positive patient and you have surgery first, there is significant benefit from the addition of regional modal radiotherapy in terms of uh, re reduction in local recurrence, reduction in distant recurrence, and also overall survival benefit. But this observation is limited to patients with no positive disease. And the same sort of overview analysis had shown that if you had negative nodes, Regional radiotherapy does not benefit you. So the question that then eventually was asked was, a patient that has positive nodes before, but then they turn negative at the time of surgery after new adjuvant chemotherapy, do they behave like not positive patients and need radiotherapy, or do they behave more like non-negative patients and don't need radiotherapy? In support of the latter uh, thesis, we have retrospective data that we have published in the past showing that if you achieve a pathological bleed response in the nodes and also in the breast, the risk of local regional recurrence is substantially lower. So we had a good reason to believe that these patients probably would, would uh, uh, behave like non-negative patients, but we had to prove it prospectively that radiation did not benefit them. So we randomized about 1,640 patients over a seven-year period. It was a long study. It took a while to ramp up and, and uh, complete accrual uh, to, again, regional order radiotherapy versus no regional order radiotherapy. The caveat, of course, is that if you had breast conservation, lumpectomy, you receive breast radiotherapy in both groups. If you had the mastectomy, you did not receive chest wall radiotherapy in the no RNI group, no regional nodal radiation group, but you received chest wall and regional nodal radiotherapy in the RNI group. So we, uh, the, of course, the patient characteristics were balanced. There were younger patients as well as older patients. About 58% of the patients had the lumpectomy. Um, about 55% had sentinel lymph node biopsy, uh, and the remaining had an axillary dissection. All this was very balanced. The primary endpoint of the study was invasive breast cancer recurrence-free interval, which essentially is local, regional, or distant recurrence plus death from breast cancer. That was the primary endpoint. Secondary endpoints were a local recurrence-free interval, distant re recurrence-free interval, disease-free survival, overall survival, and toxicity, of course. So what we found in the primary point of invasive breast cancer uh, recurrence-free survival was there was no significant difference between the two groups. The hazard ratio was 0.88. Uh, there were 59 events in the um, uh, no radiation group and 50 events in the radiation group. The p-value was not significant. What I didn't mention, of course, is that initially the study was planned to be analyzed after 172 events. That would give us an 80% power to detect the 35% reduction in IBCF. IBC RFI. However, we also had the second caveat in the analysis that we would analyze the study 10 years after the first patient got into the study. So we did not reach the 172 events, but we reached the 10 year mark. So we presented here the time dependent analysis, which was based on 109 events, not 172 events. So there's still more events potentially that we'd like to see. Although, happen. what an amazing thing that right. there weren't so as much, many events yes, at they 10 years. They did so much better at 10 years, uh, the outcomes are over 90%. Uh, so, again, to go back, no difference in the primary endpoint, no difference in local regional recurrence, although there were 11 events in the no radiation group and four events in the radiation group, so there was a little bit of a difference, but it was 0.9%. Was that any difference between um, hormone receptor status? 
So uh, when we looked at it according to the stratification variables, according to ER receptor, uh, former receptor status or uh, HER2 new status, there was no difference. There was a subset analysis that was unplanned that we looked at according to subtype, and there the numbers are getting smaller, so we have to be very cautious about how we interpret. But somehow we, we saw that the triple negative patients actually had a detriment, if you like, from radiation, which <laughs> is not really right. expected, it can be explained. And the ER positive HER2 negative patients tended to have some more benefit. But again, very early data, and I wouldn't put any weight at this point in the subset analysis. We have to wait for more events. Uh, but also the secondary endpoints, disease-free survival, distant love suite, or survival, absolutely, almost so <coughs> identical. Moving forward, you know, what do you do on Monday? <coughs> if a patient has positive nodes and negative nodes by whatever extent of axillary surgery uh, after neoadjuvant therapy, uh, we can now avoid nodal field radiation, uh, which is really the extended field that you right. use rather than the standard post-lumpectomy radiation. So that's really great news for our patients and uh, I think a big advance. But now I think the next question that comes up is how much surgery do you need in the axilla after you've had neoadjuvant therapy if you had positive nodes to start? Uh, where, I, you know, people have a positive sentinel node sometimes go and have these huge dissections when they're going to need radiation anyway and that's really a very morbid procedure. It is and actually there is another what we, we used to call the sister trial to the NSABP B51 or TG1304 that Alliance led almost at the same time and we took the patients that converted the nose to negative they took the patients that the, the, the nose became clinically non negative but then when they had the sentinel lymph node biopsy the sentinel node was positive, so they randomized patients to completion of dissection or not, assuming they would get radiotherapy. But speaking also in terms of axillary surgery, uh, we have advanced a lot in our uh, ability to detect residual disease in the sentinel nodes with targeted dissections where we now target the clip node, removing the clip node, and do the sentinel lymph node biopsy. But our false negative rate is dropped almost two to three to four. So we can now do less surgery but we still await yeah. the alliance, alliance trial, which business. will be expected in the next year or two, maybe. Right. Uh, it's really exciting data, and uh, this is really take home to your practices type of information. Uh, exciting to see the presentation here, and thanks very much, Terry, for discussing the data. Thank you. It's a pleasure.